Jess haven't been on here in a while, but we're gonna check this freezer. Oh, damn. You coming in? No? Oh, no Alright. Uh, complaint is fans are not running. Freezer's at 26. And uh, just starting my little troubleshooting inside. Make sure the coil's not frozen. But I already know we got a problem because we don't have any power at the, uh, at the thermostat. So uh, we'll go up to the roof and check it out. So I'll see you up there in a minute. It's just a pretty shady day. Be going up on the roof. Nice and wet. Drizzling. So I'll see you up there. Alright, gents, so I make my way up the ladder. First thing I notice is there's my panel <coughs> for my freezer condenser. And there's my freezer. Just exposed in the rain. I am not looking forward to touching this stuff. But let's check for power, check for fuses, all that good stuff. So, golly, how the frick are the screws? Look at this. Looks like somebody took this off. Or did it rip off? There's no other screws around. What the hell? Check this out. <coughs> oh man, look at that. Just ripped out with a wind or something. Why did I only have one screw though? Alright, start checking this bad boy. Alright gents, so I just the voltage of my contactor. I was missing one little power. So I came to the disconnect, pulled the fuses, and took fuse one. Good. Fuse two. Good. Fuse three, no good. So that fuse blew. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna check the components uh, to ground, make sure nothing's grounded, but more than likely it was just rain. You know, one of these guys. See, let's test those out. Let me pull them out, test them. So I found a bad 20 amp fuse, <sighs> but my other concern is I'm probably going to have to change out that time clock. I don't have the grassland digital ones, but whatever you want to call those out there, but I got a 814520. So if, if that clock up there is bad, uh, we're gonna replace it with this one and we'll see what happens so there we go fuse is replaced uh, let's check this time clock see if it shows any signs of uh, any signs of damage look at that in there let's see if I can get the light on and it's definitely not good. So, just by looking at all that black stuff in there, I'm not gonna turn this. I'm not gonna feed power to it. I don't want to cause any any more damage than possibly what's already what's already happened. I already tested everything to ground. <laughs> Nothing's grounded, so I'm gonna replace this guy just because of all that. I don't, I don't know if you can really see it, but uh, let's take it off so you see what we find. 
Alright, so I took this off just to give it a closer look. I really can't tell anything back here. Uh, I don't know if that's an issue or not, but you can see right there. Come on, camera, focus. Right there. You can see some black coming out of this relay so I'm just not gonna feed power to it uh, I'm gonna put in that mechanical time clock and, uh, and we'll see I don't like the way these motors have been exposed to water now uh, hopefully they don't burn up oh man look at that look at that motors probably toast let me see if I can this phone sucks. I need to get a better recording. That. that motor's probably toast. This one does not look bad. So, oh, dag nabbit. Yeah, that looks black all inside. Yep. So we might have to change that out as well. We'll see. Let me disconnect that. Ohm it out. That one too. Just as a precaution. But I'm definitely changing out this clock. So I'll be right back. Alright, gents. So we got the clock in. I just had it covered up because of this drizzle. So I got the clock in. Set the 40 minutes. It's fine. Just for now, uh, we're gonna feed some power to it. I already disconnected this motor because not only does it look horrible, it looks burnt, but the windings are open between these two. So I'm just gonna leave it disconnected for now and get a model number and then uh, pick that up tomorrow on normal hours. Hopefully, everything runs fine. So, uh, here we go. I'm gonna put some power to it. Let's hope we don't see any Fourth of July magic. <laughs> this meter out the way. And so at this point in the video my camera dies and I lose some footage but essentially what happens was uh, first condenser fan motor comes on with a compressor second condenser fan motor has a temperature switch that uh, pretty much when it's 60 degrees it will not let the second fan come on so I decide to put these two legs directly to the motor bypassing all of this and my second motor comes on but it only uh, runs for about three minutes and then that one dies as well so I have two dead condenser fan motors so essentially what I do is I go to the neighbor which is a walk-in cooler exact same condenser and steal their second fan bring it over to this condenser and put it on on the uh, primary spot so now I have my cooler and freezer both with uh, one fan so yeah gotta do what you gotta do all right, so you gotta love it. These come out with a full bracket and everything. I'm just gonna put it on, over here on the primary side. Close this baby up. And that's it. We'll see how they're doing. Whew. It's a good thing they're the same. Same motors, same everything. So we'll see how it, how it works out tonight. All right, gents, that took all of five minutes. So that's the freezer, that's the cooler. I was satisfied right now, so. So we got this uh, freezer up and running, at least with one motor for now. And that coil is clean, 
So this should this should get them uh, <coughs> through the night. Excuse me, I'm a little sick today, and uh, I'll get out of here. So that one's satisfied right now, but that one's doing good. So I'm gonna wrap this up and get out of here. So luckily that one had two good motors. Put one in here, and uh, we'll get a couple motors for tomorrow. Come out here on uh, normal hours instead of overtime and yeah get this customer 100 percent so thank you gents for watching we'll see you on the next one